We are all unique. We are individuals. But do you actually know what defines an individual? What's the definition? If we Google it, we end up usually on Wikipedia. <clears throat> and here it's defined, an individual is defined as a blank slate shaped by experience and education. So to sum up, actually, we are defined by our environment. Our environment defines us as an individual. Now a way easier question. What do we do if we have pain, feel sick, or suffer from a specific disease? You're right. We take a drug to relieve us from the pain, to cure the disease, and to feel much better. But do you actually know that currently the pharmaceutical industry is facing a huge crisis? In this figure, you see the number of drugs that could be brought to the market when spending one billion US dollar or a huge um, and a telescope. <laughs> In 2010, not even a single drug could be brought to the market with one billion US dollars. So it's a huge problem. Further, it takes about 10 to 15 years from the initial screening to the final drug. And nowadays, it costs 2 billion US dollars. It's a lot of money. And if we would spend this money on cars, we could buy, for example, 11,933 Tesla Model X with the best configuration. If you want them to park these cars, you would need 19 soccer fields, as in the start of Swiss. So it's a lot of cars and actually a lot of money you need to spend. So it's clear we need a new technology. We need a technology that reduces the, de the development time, increases the efficiency, and also decreases the cost. The drug development process can be split into three parts. First, we have the clinical, uh, the preclinical pre phases. Then we have the clinical phases, and we have the approval and marketing. In the approval and marketing, there is mainly bureaucracy, so we cannot really kick in with a new technology. In the clinical phase, the drug is tested on humans, so it's also quite hard to exchange the humans with another technology. But what we can do is actually, we can change the models which are used in the preclinical phase. So the models are actually used to model the human body, and this is exactly where the new technology kicks in. This technology is called organs on a chip. Taking a step back, so what kind of models are nowadays used? We have the Petri dishes. The Petri dishes are actually plastic containers. Inside these plastic containers, the human cells are put in, in a big soup of cell culture media, and then the drug is tested. As you can imagine, this container doesn't really model the human body. It's physiology. The other thing what they can use are animals. They can perform animal experiments. They are needed nowadays. But the big problem here is that if the drug is working in an animal, it's just working in a human with a probability of about 50%. So actually, you could flip a coin to see whether the drug will work in the human or not. So now, what is the difference from organs on a chip to the other models? The difference is that we treat the human cells as an individual. And as we learned, for an individual, it's important to have the right environment. So inside these devices, we model the environment and actually the geometry, the architecture, the forces, the flow, anything which is important for the specific organ. And we don't model the full organ, we look at the smallest functional unit, so we go from the organ level to the micro level and try to model the smallest functional unit inside these devices. If we look at the human lungs, it's a beautiful example of a very dynamic organ. We all breathe every day, and the breathing motion is controlled by the diaphragma. This muscle is contracting and relaxing, leading to an expansion of the human lung, 
this expansion and relaxation is transferred from the organ level to the lung alveoli and further down to the air blood barrier. So in this organ, the smallest function unit is the air blood barrier. Here you see a section of a human air blood barrier. You see the arrow showing on the blood, and everything which is around is air. So the air blood barrier is this tiny barrier between the air and the blood. And our team developed now lungs on a chip. And this is how it looks like. We integrated 12 independent lungs on a single chip. So why it's called chip? Because actually for some parts we need technology, fabrication technology, which is used in the computer industry. This is why it's called on chip, although there's nothing going on with electronics. In the center well, we integrated an ultra-thin elastic membrane we developed. For comparison, can you imagine what kind of image this is? It's actually a micrograph of a human hair. So you see this membrane is about 20 times thinner than the human hair. And what we then can do, we can take human cells from the patient and put it on this membrane. Here you see in green the cells which are actually facing the air side and in red cells which are facing the blood side. And in between we have this ultra thin membrane. So we can recreate the air blood barrier. Because it's important that we also model the forces, we not only develop lungs on a chip, but actually breathing lungs on a chip. So aside from the ultra-thin membrane where we can culture the human lung cell zone, which is shown here, we integrated the second membrane into our chip, which is shown in blue. And if we pull this membrane down, the upper membrane is pulled down as well. So what we can do is we model the breathing motion as it is in vivo. Here you see breathing patient cells. When you develop new technologies, it's always important that you make it as simple as possible, so it's easy to use. This is exactly what we did. We developed a new technology for existing biological labs. In biological labs, people are used to standard formats and to pipette. So people which are actually used to work in the labs, they can also work with our new technology because it has the same format, they're used to this format, and they also just need to pipe it. Everything else is done by machines which are operated by the bio biologists, but which are very easy to handle. So we can model healthy human lungs, but we can also go a step further, which is in the future. In the future, we plan to take also specific diseases and try to model them inside, these lung, inside the lung on chip or inside any organ on a chip. This allows us to actually develop diseases on a chip. These diseases can then be used to actually find new drugs specific for that disease, to help find new targets which won't be possible to find without this technology. Going another step into the future, we can look at each one of you. Each one of you, or more precise, your organs are specific. Your organs are different from each other. Your organs, your system is unique as a fingerprint. What we can do with this technology is to take cells from you and put it onto our organs on a chip and create models which best fit you. Then we can take different drugs, screen them to see which drug best works for you. And this is called personalized medicine on a chip. 
Now, a big, big step into the future. I have to mention this because it's still a long way to go. But the overall goal of this technology is not to model a single organ, but to model multiple organs. To model these organs inside the chips, if we can create such a system, we can actually have specific humans where we can test the drugs before they even go to the clinics. So this means we can actually have preclinical humans on a chip. This allows to test the drug in a safe environment to find, to find out whether there is any adverse effect on a specific organ, because sometimes we take a drug and it's going to the intestine. But maybe there is an adverse effect on the skin, on your heart, on your lung. And this we can model inside such a preclinical human. Another thing what we can do with this system in the future is actually to check whether a specific drug has any adverse effects on group of people which are usually excluded in the clinical trials. These people are very important to all of us. And we want to know whether the drug is working or have any adverse effect on them, which is possible with this technology. So I believe with organs on a chip, we can change how drugs will be developed. Thank you. <laughs>